The Ford Mustang Mark I is a very tempting proposition. Those retro five-spoke wheels, the driving light cutouts, the cue ball gear shifter, it's got more old school charm than Clint Eastwood. There's also plenty of reasons not to jump straight in, such as the hefty price premium over the standard GT, and the fact that several features on US cars never made it to Australia. So is it worth investing the extra 20K for one of the 700 limited edition Mark 1s? Let's dig a little deeper. Priced from a hefty $83,365, the Mark I slots into the modern day Mustang family tree between the entry level V8 GT model and the supercharged Mustang R spec. The Mark I was inspired by the original 1969 Ford Mustang Mark I, which paid homage to Chuck Yeager. He was the first person to eclipse the speed of sound, Mark I, in the Bell X1, an experimental rocket plane. And like that classic Mustang, this modern day muscle car gets an impressive number of retro design cues. Dark 19 inch five spoke alloy wheels, these side stripes and bonnet decals, along with the Mark I badges, stand this model out from regular Mustangs. There's another Mark I logo on the bonnet, while an upgraded exhaust system with 4.5 inch quad pipes looks tough. And better yet, it sounds lumpy. Get an earful of that. The engine is lifted from the Bullet Special Edition Mustang, which boosts power by around 6 kilowatts, thanks to a few extras including this, a cool air induction system. The Mark I gets the Shelby GT350's intake manifold, 87mm throttle bodies and an auxiliary engine oil cooler. There's also a rear axle cooling system and it has a limited slip differ standard and the suspension has been tuned, but more on that later. The Mark I is the first production Mustang in Australia to come with a high-performance Tremec six-speed manual transmission, complete with twin-disc clutch, an upgraded oil cooler, and even rev-matching tech, which is great for nufties like me who aren't very good at heel and toe. There's a few more Mark I logos inside the car and this build plate, along with side seals. It's pretty cool in here, but US versions of the car get extra gear, such as branded floor mats, and even a higher performing and more robust Torsen rear diff. You can even get an aero body kit with the US car. The rest of the interior is standard Mustang fare, which features a very cool digital dash with sport and track modes. And this model has optional Recaro leather seats as well. They're super comfy and very supportive. The infotainment system is good and functional, but it is starting to feel a little dated compared to newer systems. And look, some of the plastics in here are pretty cruddy, and it kind of brings down that sense of quality in the cabin. But as soon as you start the engine and drive, you'll forget about those crappy dash plastics, because this genuine American muscle car is very engaging to drive. Fundamentals make for a compelling experience. Big V8 up the front and proper manual in the middle, pumping power to the rear wheels. And I gotta say, the simple act of changing gears with this Tremec is profoundly satisfying. The way it slots in and out of gates, it requires a little bit of extra shove, but it's really precise as well. I just love it. The engine does bog down a little bit coming out of slower, tighter corners, and you really need to be in the right gear at the right time. But the idea of taking time to learn the car, having a bit of a challenge to drive it, and not just falling asleep behind the wheel of a car that drives itself, makes for a much more satisfying experience. There's significant chassis upgrades here too. Stiffer springs and thicker anti-roll bars, which get the car tipping into corners with a bit more eagerness now. It feels more determined and sits flatter through corners than its donor car. And I reckon the updated suspension also helps mask the Mustang's weight and bulk as well. A larger brake servo and super sticky Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres make it more predictable to drive fast than the standard GT model. The Brembo brakes were good stoppers to begin with, and now they feel just that little bit tighter. There's a lot more grip on offer here now, which means the back end isn't going to snap into wild power slides at the drop of a hat. But Depending on how you drive, that's a good thing or a bad thing.
the whole package is simply more resolved than the regular Mustang, and that's what Ford promised with the Mark I. More purpose for those that want to push their muscle car a little, or take in the odd track day. Look, it's no GT350, but the connection between car and driver is more instinctive than the standard V8 Mustang, and as a result, it's more compelling to drive. Adaptive dampers help soften the more rigid suspension tune when cruising. And I gotta say, I thought it would be a stiffer overall vehicle, but even around town on speed bumps and whatnot, it's actually pretty good. The old school powertrain contributes to driving enjoyment as well. The lumpy exhaust note adds big dollops of drama. It's gonna be a sad day if the next generation Mustang downsizes its engine or perish the thought, even ditches the V8 altogether. But as it stands, acceleration is crisp, controlled and decisive. Yes, it's got more traction, but it's a manual V8 with a diff. So if you want to, you can lay dirty, great 11Zs right down your street. And look, it won't break the sound barrier, but for most people, this will feel plenty fast. Ford has been true to its word with the Mustang. It's built a successful global sports car and unbottled some nostalgic special editions, clearly aimed at cashed up boomers. There's no doubt the Mustang Mark I delivers improved grip, braking and acceleration over the GT. And the old school visuals are a nice touch. But I'm just not convinced this car is $20,000 better than the regular V8 Mustang. I reckon 10 grand is a more appropriate premium. But hey, it's still not going to stop all 700 of these big beasts from selling out quick smart.